So when I start on a new project, when I start on a new tank, aircraft's a little different. And when I start on a new tank, I, I start with the tracks because it takes the longest. I'm gonna have to use super glue to glue them together. It's not melt together like the Tamiya tracks. It has just little things on both sides, which kind of worries me if it's going to stay together, <clears throat> even with super glue. I have this uh, Stylix super glue gel that works really good for models because it doesn't run like a liquid super glue. I find the liquid super glue runs and then gets all over the place if you're not careful. But you know you should always try to be careful but it's not always so easy. So I'll put some super glue here. Fortunately, you can definitely tell, tell different, definitely tell the difference between the part that's where the where it goes together. Here's holes. Here's no holes. I could probably cut them out though, but it may not be even that bad. Just put it on top. Tanks have fenders. We'll cover it up. Well, tanks that have fenders will cover it up. This one doesn't have fenders, but if it stays on the top, it should still be good. It's not going to be able to run through the track, though. Got a couple of clothespins on there to keep it pressed down. And the track should be dry enough. We'll start with a little painting on the tracks. The first coat is brick red, or how Ravel calls it, seagull road, which is seagull is like a, a brick. We just start with the rough coat over it. Because we want these to really be rusty. One side of the tracks are finished. Once it dries, and usually in the summer it dries a lot faster. Usually in the summer, the one side would have been finished by the time I finished painting the other side. But when it's cooler, then it takes a bit longer. And so that'll have to dry. And then we can uh, do a little bit more. So now for the other side of the track, it goes a little faster. 
Get to my flat. I always use old brushes for the track. Tracks are done. First step. <clears throat> the first of four or five, depending on how much I want to end up weathering them. But, you know, this was in a tank that was used in the war, in combat. But it was produced, so that means that they would have tested it. So that means it would have been used. So it's going to show somewhere, especially on the track. Because the track gets worn the most. As well as, you know, skirts and fenders and stuff are easy to bend and, and get messed up. So now we're going to do the second coat, uh, the first weathering coat on the track. I'm going to use this Ravel brown. It looks more like ochre to me or a orange color, but I get that look. And then that has to dry. Now see, you can already see a difference between what was painted with the orange and what's just red. Actually, the red's a little too old, I think. <coughs> but we're going to go ahead and paint the other side now. Now this orange color is on the track. And the orange color is really just going to stay into the crevices. And we're going to go over again with other colors to, to blend it together. So the next step here is going to be add some silver to it. That and it shows the wear on the track. I used the the iron color from Ravel. It doesn't have to be you're not really adding a lot. Just a quick you, know, you want to get here on the on the um, the exposed parts here and also a little bit here in the middle. Where the, where the track bends. The parts that rub against something that are metal.
Of course, a tank, with track, a tank that has track pads, you wouldn't do as much. Hardly any at all. A little bit, with a little bit on the sides from the track pads, where the where the uh, pieces bend together. But most of these World War II tanks, a lot of them don't have track pads. Most of them I don't think have track pads. I think maybe like the Shermans. German tanks, I think, had all, all steel. And I think the Soviet tanks had all steel too. Japanese. I've only built two Japanese tanks, but I think they both had steel track. Thin it out a little bit with some thinner. This metallic paint from Ravel dries pretty fast too. Does the already dry enough to do the other side? On this side you want to get more on the, uh, the center guides. The center guides are going to be warm. The problem I always find with these rubber tracks is the paint peels off of it before you can even get a clear coat on it. It may also be just the Ravel paint. Mm -hmm. It's what I get the easiest here is Ravel, so I use as much Ravel as I can. Because it's a lot more expensive to get Humbrol or, or Model Master or something. But I do order Model Master when I can and Humbrol has some good has a good paint line too. So if I can get it then I can mm -hmm. order some colors. And for sprays I like to use well for gloss sprays I like to use Tamaya. And this step is finished now. Next we'll be uh, adding some dirt to it to tone it down and mix colors good. So now we're going to finally finish uh, weathering this track. For this, for this we're going to use some red brown. If I was in a, this would be like mainland Japan, something darker. 
if it was in the desert, in the desert area, I would use a sand or something like that. But you can, you can do it really thick, or you can do it really, you know, thinner. Or you can do multiple layers of, of beige and brown, or sand and, br and brown. And then they gotta dry. And it wouldn't hurt to put a really, really light coat of beige on it too, either. You can use a, something like this. It's a darker beige. Water, uh, like from Model Master, the, the armor sand, I mean the, the sand. Either one of them works. Well, that's how I do my tracks on my tanks. And I think they turn out to be pretty good. They're rusty. They have some silver on them for the wear on the metal parts. And you can add some more brown, darker, lighter, sand. It depends on where the tank's running or operating, how you want it to look. You can add some really dark brown too for like this places that has soil that's almost black. So you can use a really dark brown, a really a sandy place big. So in my, my next video, I'm going to show you all around a little bit, uh, our new house. Show you my workshop and stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a work in progress. but And then um, I also will review uh, Focal 490 that I built. It's a kit that you really have to watch out for, and I'll show you why. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And ring that bell for notifications of my new videos. Until next time.